How do you scale a monolith? Well, if you have well-defined boundaries and you're loosely coupled between them, you have a couple different options besides just scaling up. You can scale out, but in many different ways. Here's how. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. A monolith doesn't have to be a big ball of mud. If you have well-defined boundaries and you have loose coupling between them, you do have a lot of options in scaling. So in, I've used these slides before, I'm gonna show you the solution structure of my loosely coupled monolith and why it matters about boundaries and scaling because I'm gonna show you some options for horizontally scaling that really apply to a monolith. So in the architecture I'm describing, I have two top level processes, a HTTP server, which is running ASP.NET Core, and I have a separate process that's a message processor that I call a worker, and it's basically just interacting with a message broker. Then subsequently, I have, in this illustration, I just have three different boundaries that are these blue boxes. Within those, I have a project with just a class library of contracts, implementation, and tests. And this particular boundary has its own database. And then you can see uh, just different boundaries have the exact same thing. So in Rider, that solution in my loosely coupled monolith, I have pretty much that same setup here. I have billing, sales, shipping, and then here's my two top level projects. The key point here is that shipping does not reference sales and sales doesn't reference billing or shipping, vice versa. The only things these projects actually reference are contract projects. Contract projects have things like uh, messages, POCOs, those types of things. It's these top level projects um, that are the actual executables, the console apps, that actually kind of merge everything together, if you will, that compose everything, that actually hosts everything. So that's how I define my loosely coupled monolith, that these boundaries don't actually interact uh, directly synchronously or by reference in the project. So another way to kind of visualize these two executables, and this is what both of them ultimately look like, is they're the executable, they're the kind of the hosting source, and then they have the class libraries for contracts. That's what they reference, contracts, implementations, um, of different boundaries. And th those particular boundaries interact with their respective database and message broker. So to first to scale each, because each is gonna be needing to scale horizontally, if you're not gonna scale vertically. Um, and the typical way that you would think of scaling ASP.NET Core or any type of web application is if I have my client and it's interacting directly with it, my ASP.NET Core project. Really, I'm just gonna throw a load balancer in front of that. And then through different load balancing techniques like uh, round robin, when a request comes in, it's gonna direct it to one HTTP server, the next request gets to the next in line, and so forth, and it just keeps going around, distributing the load of each request to a different HTTP server. Now, if you have defined boundaries and you have a project structure with how everything references, where you, these boundaries, these particular contexts don't reference each other and they have their own database like I've described before. Really what that means is you can start segregating and splitting up each one of these boundaries to handle a particular uh, workload. So what I mean by that is if we take this right now as an example, each one of these servers is serving all HTTP requests for all the different boundaries, for all the different contexts. So let's say I have four different boundaries or contexts um, that's our hosted for each one. I call these C1 through C4, just as an example. Each one has its own database. If a request comes in and goes to any server, any server is gonna be able to handle that request. But what you can do is define target groups or just groupings of servers that you're gonna set uh, up in your load balancer with different rules to say, if traffic is going to this particular route or however you wanted to find these rules, you can say you're gonna to go to this set of servers. So in this instance, even though that these particular HTTP servers still have the same code as all the other ones, they're actually only gonna be utilizing one of the boundaries, one of the different contexts. So they're gonna be serving requests for a particular part of the system. And then let's say the uh, you have a separate server like this third one, where it's, it's getting all the requests for these other three different contexts. And again, they all have their own separate databases. What this allows you to do is keep scaling the, a busier or a kind of a hotspot of your system. So if you're getting an abundance of traffic uh, for these particular, for this particular boundary, this particular context, it doesn't affect the overall entire system. You still have 
other servers that are responding to other traffic for other parts. And because they have their own database, it's not like your bottleneck here is the database for the entire system. It's just for this particular uh, context, this particular boundary. So splitting things up, if you have boundaries, you can start getting a little bit more fine grain on how you're scaling horizontally. Now, if you start doing this and you start scaling your application horizontally, ultimately you're funneling everything back to the database and it can become the bottleneck. So you kind of have similar options here, which are to scale up or scale out. So you could scale up different database instances, but you can also scale out as well by adding read replicas or a cluster. But the key thing here is that your entire system isn't running off one database. Again, each boundary, each context has its own database. So it allows you to scale each database independently, depending on what context or boundary it's for. Maybe you have said, again, you have a heavy hotspot of the server that takes a lot of um, requests, has a high load. Your database and how you want to treat that may be different for each different context. Maybe you have a cluster with some read replicas over here. And for this particular boundary, or say like this C3, it has a smaller database because it doesn't take that much many requests or doesn't have that high of a load. It allows you to find these things independently per boundary, per context. So the message processor worker, as I call it, really can do the exact same thing is if you have a message processor that has um, all the same contexts, all the same boundaries, these are exactly the same class libraries that are in the ASP.NET Core project, and they still use the exact same set of databases. If you wanna scale out, you can simply just add more instances of the message processor worker. However, you can do the same thing by segregating by context. So you could define different consumer groups to say, or subscriptions to say, for these, this particular boundary, C1, I'm gonna have two different processes or 100 or whatever the number is that are gonna be subscribing to these particular types of messages or however they're defined here in your message broker. And then you could have a separate set of servers or mess pro message processor that deals with the other contacts. So if you have a high number, like a high volume of messages for this particular context, you can add more instances. But again, boundaries allow you to do this and not having a tight coupling between these boundaries is really what enables you. Defining boundaries is so hard to do, but it's so important to do. And as you can see, is if you do define boundaries and they're loosely coupled, you can do things like scaling horizontally at a more fine grained level of what that boundary is to increase availability. So you may be thinking, okay, that's great. I can scale these things individually because of the boundaries, but I don't wanna deal with this monolithic deployment in that every server has to get a new version and they all gotta be released together. And there's a lot of risk there. And that's why a lot of people like the services, microservices approach is that each service can be deployed independently. So that's a good question. And coming up soon, I'll post another video on how you can carve off one of these boundaries and have it live standalone so that you can deploy it separately. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you haven't done so already, if you're interested in software architecture and design in .NET, make sure to subscribe. If you wanna support my channel or get extra content like the slides that I had in this video, click the join button. To all my existing Code Opinion members, thank you. I really do appreciate it.